morning. We're at uh, primarily a terminal auction yard this morning in Central California. And a couple of quick comments to make before we start going through facilities and, and animal utilization and animal identification is here in the San Joaquin Valley, the summers are incredibly long and they stay relatively hot. So an awful lot of what we do is aimed at keeping the animals comfortable and that also eliminates risk to the people that are gonna have to handle them as much as possible. Our workers comp claims in California among the animal science industry are extremely high. So good animal handling skills are imperative for a number of reasons. Um, most of these sales will get started while it's still as cool as it's gonna get during the day and be done by about noon, especially at this time of the year. What we've got here are mixed groupings of animals. Today is cattle day at this particular sales yard, in which case um, different kinds of cattle will come through here based not only on breed, but also on type. In the San Joaquin Valley, we have a tremendous amount of dairy cattle go through these sales yards when, for a day like today, these cattle are primarily what we call beef cattle. Um, that this is usually the end point of their life. Not always, but often is. And so in the San Joaquin, we have a tremendously large dairy industry. So an awful lot of what you're gonna see here will be dairy-based breeds of cattle, Holsteins and Jerseys primarily. But we also get a lot of cattle that come off of rangeland this time of year and out of the foothill country. So the variety here is as big as you're gonna see anywhere in the country. If you look straight behind me, you've got two animals here, both of mixed breeding. Um, but you'll notice that they are grouped together here. They may not be the same owner, but they're grouped here together um, based upon relatively close size. The next pen beyond them has got a tremendous amount of mostly predominantly Holsteins that are closest to us this time. Holstein's behavior is usually associated with the fact that they've been handled many, many times and have had a lot of association with humans. And so they tend not to be real high strung or high headed. It's not, that's just a generality and generalities can get you in trouble. What most of these cattle get grouped together by size, sometimes by breed, usually by gender. And that's not necessarily the case in the second pen that you're looking at down there, which has got one small bull on the far side. Um, it's got Holstein females primarily on this side. And one of the behavioral things that you do see is one of the larger Holsteins there, uh, which is not a cow that's in milk, is probably cycling right now because she's getting an awful lot of interest from the other cattle inside the pen. That's important um, to understand that because the animals that are distracted by other animals within their group are not paying attention to you, so that gives an opportunity um, for things to happen maybe that normally wouldn't. We're gonna take a walk and we'll go through kind of some breed identification. And remember, breeds just give you generalities. They do not give you specific behaviors. As I said earlier, you've got some Holstein uh, females in here, heifers that are in non-production. You've got some Holstein steers in here, and you've got some beef breeds in here, and um, what appears to be a Portuguese fighting bull kind of in the middle of that, and he's kind of lackadaisical this morning. That isn't necessarily a common practice to be mixing genders like that um, for the reasons that I already said before. This right here, you've got these guys are grouped together, and, and I'm not looking at the brands on both of them, but one of the things you do notice about that is in general, they've got the, the horned cattle they consider to have. Um, cattle, when they grow horns like that, they know they've got horns, and they typically not necessarily are more aggressive, but they become higher up in the alpha chain of animals, and so um, they've had those horns obviously their entire life, and there's a, a possibility for physical injury to other cattle that have not been around horned cattle, so the advantage kind of shifts to them. That can become a risk for both the person that's handling them and other cattle within the group. This pen right here, just kind of on close observation, are a bunch of uh, Brahma influence cattle primarily, and you may even have some brown, a brown Swiss mixed in with that group, but a group that, at least from this angle right here, predominantly heifers, and they're about the same size, again, with Brahma influence, and maybe even in some cases, some slight dairy influence mixed in with that. You'll notice by camera that they are all bulls, okay, everybody that's in there and some shared common kinds of genetics based upon breed, but mostly they're here together because they're all bulls, as I said. Um, in large groups of cattle, they often have to sort themselves out as far as a pecking order that's established. You bring animals into a sales yard like this and they may not have time to do that. 
and nobody is on their home turf and that kind of makes a difference in the way that they are going to interact with each other. The next group of cattle we come to are typically what are classified as eared cattle in general or at least half eared cattle meaning they have some Brahma influence to them. Um, that does not indicate whether they're going to be high headed or anything else. It just, uh, oftentimes Brahma cattle, in my experience, they tend to be a little more inquisitive in, in a lot of the ways that they interact with humans. On, on quick observation, the cattle that you got here are predominantly steers, okay, that are mixed into this group right here. You got variations in size, but you can see there's not a lot of, of antagonistic behavior within this group. Um, and they're kind of sorted out that way intentionally. We're up on top of a catwalk on the lead-in alley and as you can see, um, the lead-in alley allows pens to sort off into the main alley, which comes this way. The sales yard is behind me. Um, the auction arena itself is behind me, and those cattle will come up this way. What's important for you to understand is these fences are approximately six feet high. The sides are solid, and so that kind of obstructs the view on cattle and very commonly it's easier to move them if they can't see a lot of things peripherally but the top rail on this is heavy pipe and it's approximately six feet tall we're standing on top of a catwalk right now and a catwalk does a couple of functions it allows you if you have to to move the animals from the outside so that you're not in direct contact with them facilitates that you probably won't get kicked at um, but it also elevates you above the animals and allows you to see things a lot better most facilities that you have to work animals in on a regular basis if you run lots of animals through it warrants having a catwalk associated with them. Now the catwalk that is expanded metal that is non-slippery. That's all part of the safe an animal handling procedure. But as we come down this alley and you see three of the employees that are walking this direction, as you come down these alleys, you'll notice that there are blocking gates set up along the main alleyway. So if cattle become reluctant to move any farther, you limit the amount of turnaround space that they've got. And that will move them more easily up to uh, the sales area. One other thing though that has to come into consideration, and this is part of the way that livestock see, is they have more trouble with bright light and shadows than people do. And later we'll talk about the way that their eyes are constructed and their skulls are constructed which makes them see the world much more in a different fashion than humans do. We're outside now to take a look at the cattle that are about to be unloaded to come in here. They'll be sorted off as they come if necessary. But what's important to understand is the way the facilities are set up. The left hand side of the trailer comes up flush against the side of, um, side of the corral space and there's two gates, the one that forms on the trailer and then the gate that the employee is hanging on to. The gate of the trailer will swing back and so these cattle as they come out will see the open space in front of them and should unload relatively easy. Again, one of the things that sometimes complicates that issue is having them go from dark to light and vice versa. Okay, And so what we've got in this particular grouping of cattle are, are Holstein, probably females that are coming out of milk production. Um, large cattle, but cattle that have been around humans their entire life. And so their anxiety about being around people is minimal, but they are on a new facility and there's new sights, new smells, and some new sounds that are associated with that. But they're typically cattle that don't move because of panic. Um, they move kind of sometimes out of stubbornness or out of instinct to get them to go where you want them to go. The facilities are all kind of designed that way. We're now at the, uh, the terminal auction yard and you can see the animals are going through the auction to be sold. What's imperative to kind of focus on is the design of the facilities that you've got. And if you'll notice that the bars on the pen itself are angled in, that facilitates that the animal couldn't jump out if they were extremely anxious or nervous about the situation they're under. And it's cable strung between that. There's also a rail that runs all the way around that that keeps the people from getting too close to the ring itself. But what is important also in that is you notice that where the ring man is working with a paddle and the paddle is what we call a shaker and a shaker's got things in it to make a slight amount of noise to get the animal to move without actually injuring it at all. But the shaker allows a couple other things to happen too and that is that you can touch the animal while being out of range of its back feet, 
in case it decides through anxiety or aggression to strike at you one or the other. Now, if you look at the back side of the facilities themselves, there are galvanized spaces to go through in case you've got an animal that is, is extremely agitated, might go after the ring man. You've got an escape route in two different locations, the one that sits immediately in front of the auctioneer, and there's one to the right side of the pen also to get through. Understand that the way that these animals, their eyesight works, their depth perception is almost well, somewhere between limited and non-existent. So if they see a black barrier in front of their eyes, they believe they can't go through it, even though they may have seen you go through it right before then. So that's just safety that is built in there to keep the ring people safe from accidents that can be caused by lots of different things. Okay, we'll go ahead and watch, watch the animal's behavior for a second. And as I've said, that's always really important that you understand that you watch the animal, you watch its response to people, and that kind of tells you how what the animal is going through at the time. Is it aggressive or is it simply anxious or occasionally it's just scared, okay? But the facilities are, are built to allow the animals to be moved, hopefully with as low stress as possible on the animal, but also to keep the ring steward safe. Okay, in this particular section right here, you've got a bunch of Jersey calves that are in here together. And, and the point of, of filming this one is to understand that as herding animals, they tend to want to react together. And so, obviously they're less high strung they're more in, a, in their comfort zone because they're they're moving collectively collectively on this um, large group of feeder cattle that have come in and noticed that their their interaction isn't bad because they're grouped up together and as herding animals um, this doesn't worry them a whole lot they, they've probably right. been, had minimal exposure to people prior to coming in here but if you look at that, because they're grouped together, they're okay. If you brought them in here one at a time, um, you're going to have more anxiety among them, and their behavior will influence that. If you look at, uh, just took a look at the ring steward. He's now gathered in front of um, the auctioneer, and he's got the escape route planned out. Even there's no aggression, he didn't go in there to escape it. He just went in there to grab a drink. But just the utilization of that, if you look back at the gate in which the cattle came through, um, most of these smaller calves could squeeze right through that, but they don't have the ability to reason per se, and without depth perception, um, they only see a gap there on those pieces of hard rubber of about an inch or inch and a half, so they're not going to attempt to push through it. These will be the good ones. Be them good young smoke cattle again, boys. Weight 610. Buy them there. All right, honey, I'm going to buy them there. These will be the ones to film. $1.30, 31. $1.30, 31. $1.30, $1.30, $1.30, $1.30, $1.30, $1.30, $1.30, $1.30, $1.30, $1.30, $1.30, $1.30, $1.30, $1.30, $1.30, $1.30, $1.30, $1.30, $1.30, $1.